Look. If you had one shot, and one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment, would you capture it or just let it slip? On the night of January 14th, 2010, this man right here, Sundiata Gaines, would get the opportunity to seize everything he ever wanted. All that was left for him to do was capture it. But before we get to this incredible story, we have to talk about the time when he was just inches away from never even getting that opportunity in the first place. You see, when Gaines was just four years old, he had a near-death experience. He was standing in front of a photocopy store waiting for his brother to return when all of a sudden an off-duty police officer walks up to the store holding a suitcase the officer then drops his suitcase on the ground and that's when a gun that was inside the suitcase went off somehow the impact between the sidewalk and the suitcase triggered the gun inside and Gaines happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time he was shot in the neck here's what he had to say about it quote I knew something was wrong I knew I was bleeding I didn't didn't want to touch it, but my mother was over there panicking. It kind of felt like a quick sting. I was kind of alert at the moment. I was calm. And then my mother started panicking. Then I'm in a state of panic. What's going on? What's going on? This freak accident served as a constant reminder to Gaines growing up that life is very fragile and made sure he would try to make the most of it. And boy, did he. Sundiata played high school ball in Queens, New York, averaging 28 points per game as a senior, but was overshadowed by a much more heralded New York City player, Sebastian Telfair. Even though some would say that Gaines got the best of him during their head-to-head -head battles, Gaines would go on to attend the University of Georgia for four years before declaring for the 2008 NBA draft, but unfortunately went undrafted. At least he received offers from several teams overseas and ended up playing one year in Italy. He played solid over there, averaging 13 points per game, and could have very easily continued to make pretty good money there. But his ultimate dream was to play in the NBA. So he decided instead to enter the 2009 NBA D-League draft, back when it was called the D-League instead of the G-League, where he would get selected by the Idaho Stampede 15th overall, and very quickly began to make some noise. Averaging 23 points in his first 14 D-League games, eventually catching the attention of the Utah Jazz. That's some great news. David Friedman from Utah Jazz is, is here to give us some good news. So David, the floor is yours. Hi, uh, we uh, have the intent to sign Sunday out of games to a uh, contract. I'd like to tell you welcome to the Jazz. Congratulations to you. Just found out, you know, I'm going to be playing with the Utah Jazz. They could call me up. She bought the about to cry a little bit. <laughs> He signed a 10-day contract with the Jazz on January 5th, 2010, and had to immediately pack his bags to head over to Salt Lake. During his 10-day contract, there was five games that occurred during that period. His first four games with the team went down as expected. You know, nothing really too crazy, just him trying to get used to things. But the last game of his 10-day contract would be a completely different story. Only about a week after he got called up to the NBA, he found himself going up against LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers, who were one of the best teams in the league. And on top of that, this game would be featured on national TV. And with him knowing that this game was about to be on national TV, plus the fact that this could very well be his last game, he wasn't about to let this moment slip away without making a name for himself, especially knowing that there will be plenty of eyes watching due to LeBron playing. The world was about to know his name. 
Throughout the game, no team was able to really pull away from each other. It was pretty much neck and neck throughout the first three quarters. In the beginning of the fourth quarter, Utah's all-star Darren Williams would go down with an injury, hurting his right wrist. Matter of fact, part of the reason Sundietta Gaines was even there in the first place was because Williams injured that same wrist the day before the Jazz called him up. And since Darren came back after missing a few games, there wasn't really much need to play Sunday out of this game. That is, until Darren Williams re-injured his wrist at the start of the fourth quarter like I just mentioned, as he was forced to head back to the locker room, which meant that Gaines had no other choice but to step up. It only took about a minute for Gaines to knock down his first bucket. Gaines, yes. Off the bench, here's wow. his first shot. <laughs> How about that? What do you think is going on in his head, Richie, right now? Then, soon after, he would connect on an and one that made the crowd erupt. Ball was blocked. Gaines on the run. And is uh, hit by Williams. Who gets the call? The Jazz went on a huge run ever since Gaines checked into the game. You could sense that something incredible was unfolding, and with the Jazz up by double digits with only a few minutes remaining, it looked like they were well on their way to victory. But not so fast, LeBron was out to spoil Sundiata's special night. Just when he could have easily thrown in the towel, he did the opposite. He absolutely took over. He's been that much more quicker to them. James for three. There's LeBron got the step and puts it down and the foul. 45 seconds to go. Five on the shot clock. James for three. Yes! LeBron James has taken over this game. In the blink of an eye, the momentum totally shifted in Cleveland's favor. LeBron basically went on an 18-2 run by himself, completely deflating the energy in the building. And just like that, the Cavs were in full control. It now looked like they were going to escape with the victory. Down by two with just five seconds left. Why do I have a feeling this is going to be Sunday out of games and the storybook is going to be so good it's unreal. Miles to inbound, Corver, catch. Gives it off to Ice. He's dribbling. He's out of control. Gives to Gaines at the horn. He got it. He got it for three. Sunday out of Gaines. Welcome to the NBA. Believe it or not, that was the only three-pointer he made throughout the five NBA games he played up until that point. And he sure as hell made it count. Yesterday was your first practice with this team after playing four games. How have you managed to keep yourself ready for moments like this? Now I'm just, I'm mean, right now I'm on adrenaline right now, so. He says that to this day, people still go up to him and ask him about that shot. Here's what he has to say about it. Quote, the shot really got my career started and I've taken advantage of the opportunity. Predictably, just the very next day, they rewarded him with a second 10-day contract and ultimately earned himself a contract for the rest of the season once that was up. So 